Hello there, you join me on the first tee of the Shore Nine at Prince's Golf Club in Kent. We're here to film a video about the five hardest shots in golf. What are those five hardest shots in golf? Well, we've asked Clive Tucker. Clive is a uh, coach, tour coach. He's yep. been out on tour with David Howell and more recently with Graham McDowell, the mm -hmm. 2010 US Open champion. Yep. Clive has worked with lots of players over lots of years. Yep. Um, and the first one you've suggested is the first tee shot. The, uh, the very first tee shot of the day, one that we often find quite problematic for various reasons, whether there's a shape we don't like, there's out of bounds, the wind's the wrong way, mm -hmm. or whether we're just feeling a bit nervous because people are watching. Yep. So Clive, w why is it we find this shot so hard and what can we do to make it just that little bit easier? Well, I think um, the first tee shot is difficult, particularly if you haven't prepared for it. That's, that's the magic word. There's no preparations. Or if I'm watching the guys on a Saturday morning whilst I'm coaching, they're typically hitting a few gentle phases, I might like to sort of turn them. Uh, and particularly Day of Princes, we've got a wind off the left and traps yeah. down the right-hand side, lots of heavy rough. So that left shot is troublesome for most of us. And typically, if they're hitting fades and they go out to the first hole on my course, the wind's off the left, and they slice it and kind of bemoan the fact they've hit a slice and they haven't hit a draw and can't hit a draw. They just didn't really prepare for it or yeah. allow for it. And I think that's the, that's the, biggest, that's the biggest difficulty. And also, uh, there is some pressure on it because uh, you aren't prepared and the practice is usually very gentle. It's not very, it's not very difficult. Yeah. And the idea is you make the, the practice more pressured and, and actually a little bit more consequential. Okay. And then when you get to the first tee, it feels a lot easier. One thing I should add though, is that if you can, if you can sort of make the practice more difficult, i.e. have a game, McDowell's very good at sort of teeing it off on a Thursday morning on the range or a Friday. He's hitting drivers to a very tight target. Yeah. He wants it five in a row in that gap, otherwise he starts again. So shot five's a bit more tricky, okay. it's uncomfortable. If he pulls it off, he's ready to go to the first. So it's a bit like you and I playing off the first. It means something if we miss it, but him, he's got that ready and he's good to go. Okay, so preparation and stick with what you know. So yeah. let's see you put uh, theory into practice okay. here, Clive. I'm gonna, I'm a little bit of a fader myself, so I'm gonna aim a little bit up the left-hand side. So stand a bit more to the right, gives me more room to aim left. First tee, I try to swing any more than 80%, trying to get a good contact and get my hopefully baby fade running off. The bunker's 280 down the right-hand side, so I'm not gonna meet that, even with a bit of roll. So here we go. Pretty good, actually I'm quite happy with that. Okay, so we're away safely, Clive. Yep. Let's head on down, find our next trouble spot. Okay. Okay, so we've got it away from the first tee safely. We've overcome first tee nerves. We've now switched to another hole here at Prince's, the eighth on the Himalayas, and we've done that because it's into the wind. And Clive's second tough shot is when you have to make a less than full swing, so an abbreviated swing, whether that's to punch it under the wind or keep it under trees. Mm -hmm. Why do we find that so difficult? It's difficult, Jez, because you know we have a general pattern of movement and play. We've developed a length of swing, a length of turn, which flights the ball adequately. Uh, clearly a low shot doesn't go so far through the air, so we don't want to play like that. So any, any change to, to your normal f trajectory, higher or lower, is difficult. I think plenty of people can see low, low shots on television or, or you know, Lynx course when it's, on, uh, whenever it's when it's been uh, played. And they see an abbreviated follow through and it's difficult from their normal backswing because there's just too much energy in it. And we just can't put the brakes on to keep the ball down, to so sort of slow down how we release it, to keep the loft off. Um, and it doesn't work. I think they get confused by it. Okay, Clive, so that doesn't work. What does work and how do we adjust things to, to make that shot work? Well, we adjust things by just reducing the length of the backswing. So um, typically, if we swing all the way back for a normal, say, seven iron in this case, if we can reduce that to left arm level to the ground, that gives the wrists enough time to sort of set the club, that gives us enough energy in there. And from that point, I've not got enough weight in it that I can't put the brakes on and I can't slow down how or slow down the release. And what we're trying to do from this, this sort of narrow backswing, half backswing, is to rotate through and be fully extended here. And what that does, that keeps the hand a little bit further forward before it kind of goes out and straight, takes the loft off and hits it nice and low. Okay, and any other setup changes? Yeah, there's a, from, a, from a regular ball position, for example, that could be my normal seven iron, I might go a little left, just a small amount and the ball slightly further back. So the weight goes from centre to left, the ball backs at no more than an inch inside a ball in, ball in distance. 
And that it creates a bit more shaft lean as Keeps well? Keeps the shaft lean, that, uh, that de-loss de it as well, of course, yes, it does. Okay, so that's the theory. Yep. Let's see it in action. Alrighty. So I'm going to quickly get a mark up to judge the degree. I never pick a point more than three feet away, so it's easy for me to follow it. Get the club face lined up. Ball back a little bit. Regular posture in terms of the camera can see it. Ball's back. I've got a bit, little bit of weight forward. I'm going to try and swing around about that far back. Left arm level to the, to the uh, ground. There's that abbreviated, right. nice extended finish. That gives me that lovely compression on the ball and keeps the ball out of the air. Very, very different. And uh, you may not be able to see that. That ball's on the green, but it probably went half, third the height of a normal seven. I would say so, yeah. Under half, yeah. OK, well, for Clive's third shot, we've moved to a fairway bunker. Um, now, we've got a shot here where there is no reason why you can't hit the ball onto the green. It's 150 yards. Yeah. The ball is lying cleanly. Mm -hmm. The luck. lip isn't too severe for no. the club you need to, to yeah. get to the green with. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of people find these shots very difficult, possibly more difficult than greenside bunker shots, yeah, yeah, yeah. where they at least have some idea of what they're meant to be doing. Yes. What are the problems here, and why do people find this shot so hard to hit cleanly? I think because uh, uh, the margin for error is so small, there's literally nothing under the nearly hard pan, you know, very, very tight lie. So like sitting up is not cup, it's not sat down. So any contact with the ground before the ball, the set, it's going to really ruin it completely. Add to that, I think a lot of people kind of lean back to try and help it up, then it all right. goes a little bit pear-shaped. No, hit heavy, not so good. And steep, difficult, yeah. Okay, so, I mean, in theory, there's no reason why you can't knock this ball no. on the green for me. It's 150 yeah, yards, not at all. it's downwind, mm -hmm. you don't need a lot of club. No. What do you need to do to improve your chances of success? We'd like to uh, swing it a little bit less steep. So we kind of want to pick it off the top and to help to do that, we need to make that a little bit shallow. Yeah. So that's using inside path. So if I were to swing, aim straight, play the ball mid loss slightly further back to help strike the, you know, the ball before the surface of the, of the sand, and I swing from the inside, I'm gonna push it. So I'm gonna have to aim left to accommodate for that. So I'm gonna aim maybe in terms of degrees, five or 10 degrees, the left maximum left, play the ball back in the starts, but I'm going to swing towards the target. So it's an inside shallow angle of attack, but the ball's back in the stance, so I should get the ball before the sand. Okay, and you've drawn a line there. Yeah. That's where you're, that's, that's, the, that's the flag. That's my swing line. I'm going to swing on that line, but I'm going to aim a little bit left and play the ball slightly further back in the starts. Normal setup in terms of posture, athleticism, and the ball position is just back. That's and it. anything you need to do with your feet, you might be yeah, slightly... I, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure, even though it feels fairly firm, you've got to get yourself a, a nice base. We'll, we'll have a look at that, but just get the feet sat in. I want to feel comfortable. Yes, I do. Okay, Clive, you've told us the theory. Let's, <laughs> okay. let's see what you can do. Let's give this a go. So here I am, got the ball back in the stance. Maybe, maybe five, 10 degrees to the left. Ball's to the right of my centre. And I'm going to swing definitely on the target line. So I'm aiming left, I'm going to swing on the target line. That was clean, I mean, it's on the green, but it was an ideal situation. I'd rather hit it clean. I mean, obviously not topping it. Yeah. It's bottom edge or, you know, definitely uh, ball before the surface. I'm going to get a great contact. It's going to go my distances, yeah. So it's one of those ones where uh, slightly clean is better than slightly uh, fat. As soon as you hit it slightly fat, yeah. you're not getting the distance. No, you're hedging your bets. It's either going to be a very good contact, and like, a, like a kind of flighty draw, Slightly clean, it's still drawing, it's going very straight, so it's going to go on the green, whatever. Well, we hope you're enjoying this video looking at the five hardest shots in golf with Clive Tucker. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to click subscribe to find out everything that we're putting out on YouTube and notifications. Click on that and you'll get alerted every time a new video goes up. We hope you're liking the video. If you are, click like. Let us know what your hardest shot is. Is it one of these ones here that Clive's looking at? Is it something else? It would be good to know. Maybe it's this shot, which is bunker shot off a bare lie. This one would scare most of us. Um, there's a lip to go over. There's not the usual bed of sand underneath it, so most of us kind of know how to play the uh, routine splash shot. This one, a little bit more challenging. What do we need to do here, Clive? Well, we need to do something a little bit opposite to normal. So, where as you rightly said, normally there's sand underneath the ball and there's nothing here. 
a uh, little bit of a down slope, so a bit of a lip there, no sand under it whatsoever. So if I were to typically position in you know, a splash shot, I would add loft, which increases the bounce and that helps the club come out the soft sand because we're hitting with more, you know, quite a vertical angle of attack. This is a little different because if I were add loft and open the face, the leading edge is kind of half out the ball. So I'm yeah. going to thin everything yeah. and the bounce will not help us in this situation. We kind of want to do the opposite. Yeah. So you always want to dig it. We always want the right. front edge to catch, which is not typical. So that where I would usually aim, a pretty straight, quite wide stance, lots of balance to the left side, low hands, open the face, add loft a lot. I'm going to stand a little closer to it. Yep. Bring the ball slightly further back. So what happens when you get closer is the takeaway is a little steeper. Right. And by keeping the face square, the front edge, and I'm going to have the club face, sorry, the hands a tiny bit on top of the ball. So there's, hard, there's a little shaft lean, and typically there wouldn't be in the setup. Um, so I've got a little bit of shaft lean, a little bit of pressure on my left foot, standing closer, yeah. and the club's going to go straight back and straight through. The tricky thing to feel, and it takes a bit of practice, is because it feels less lofted or de-lofted than normal, that's a bit uncomfortable. But actually what you want to imagine is on the follow through, we, as I turn through, I'm going to try and actually add loft or point the shaft, excuse me, the face to the sky. Okay. So I'm not going to let it close. I'm going to keep add loft this side. So almost like it's a scoopy kind right. of a release, right hand under left, scoopy release to help the ball up. So I've got the angle to strike, the face to dig, but I'm keeping the loft on it to get over the lip. And as you said to me uh, a minute ago when we were setting this up, you've got a 58 degree club in your hand, so there's yeah. still a lot of loft on Plenty the club. Plenty of loft, absolutely. Okay. There's tons of loft on it, yeah. yeah. There's, there's okay. not 58, it comes out lower, but it's enough, yeah. Okay, so uh, the challenge as ever, can you do it? <laughs> Let's give it a go. So standing closer, ball a little bit further back, tiny bit of shaft lean, and lots of weight in the left side, and I'm going to take it straight back and hopefully release the club under the ball. Beautifully nipped, but a bit, oh, pretty good. Yeah, a lot of spin on that one oh, I like as well, that. Clive. No, I'm happy with that, yeah. You'd be happy with that, wouldn't you, Very from there, good. when most yeah. of us would be thinking, yeah, yeah. I'm just going to thin it into that uh, face. So there you go. Couldn't strike that better. Can't play it like a routine splash shot. You've got to make quite a few adjustments, but as Clive has just demonstrated there, although it's a hard shot, it is possible. Yes, indeed. So we're on to the fifth and final of our hardest shots in golf. Uh, we're on the green, finally. Worked our way down from tee to green. Um, I was expecting maybe a double breaker or a 40 footer with a big left to right or something that is a little bit perplexing, but you've chosen something that on the face of it looks pretty straightforward, Clive. Hmm. And I think that's the difficulty or the interesting that it looks very straightforward. Yeah. I should hold this. And there's no right to hold anything unless you sort of put the work in on it. Um, even at two level, they're not, they're not a great fan of straight parts. They want to see it go one way or t'other, you know, and straight's not comfortable in one respect. It almost doesn't give them a, you know, a vision for what's, going to, what's actually going to happen. So, and also, you know, the, uh, at, at um, an amateur level, your mate says, go on, knock that in, that's a piece of cake. And it isn't really, you know, right. it's not. So, I mean, I've, first off, you know, the guys would be having some lessons to make sure their setup and techniques good and it particularly yep. aim because uh, you haven't got that, you won't hold many anyway. And then the thing to do is to, it's almost a funny, funny statement, you're going to miss happy. Right. And if you, if you, you know, can, you know, make a concerted, committed effort to a process, once you've hit it, that's it. If it doesn't go in, it doesn't go in and you've got to accept it. But if you, if you make a good effort and it doesn't go in, okay, well, I've done the right thing and I wouldn't change a single thing. That's golf. I've missed it. Just move on. Okay. So that's going to be easier said than done because half the battle is you've, Knocked it down to three yeah. feet from 60 feet away. Yeah, should hold you've done, it. You've done the hard part yeah. and now, and then if you don't then make that, you think, oh, what a waste. What a waste of time, yeah. And, you know, three, in my own game, three passing probably wasn't great for me mentally. Right. I was never comfortable with three passing. <laughs> so it's the after effects are, you know, Is hard the, to deal yeah, with. So then you're then saying, miss happy and just whatever happens. Move on and yeah. that's it. If you've done the right thing, you've done the right thing. I mean, there's no, there's no reason at all that you wouldn't be practicing before you went out or warming up, holding, try and hold four or five in a row. Yeah. Um, and if you miss, you start again. So the fourth or fifth one, if you're st stopping on four or five, uh, there's some as a consequence of that. So you're you're almost grinding it from right. on the number five. Okay, I'm not going to try and hold it. I want it to go in, but I'm just going to aim straight, commit to my stroke, keep my head down. Here it go in. If you're doing that, when you get to the first in first green or a second green or wherever it is, you've got three foot uphill, downhill, straight. Okay, well, I've got some evidence. I can make these because I've done it under the pressure and yeah. now this is a bit more easy. 
And that's pretty much it. You know, if you commit to it and miss with a good process, you cannot do more than that. Okay, so here's the test now. Yeah, right? yeah, We've yeah. got three down here. Three in a row. Three feet, dead straight. Yeah. Uh, can you do it? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'll give it my best shot. So if I kind of commit to the process. In the middle. Uh, you know, keep my head still, rock my shoulders, however it is I actually function this to feel like, there you go. Actually right. it bobbled, but it was actually a poor stroke. Just right. shows you, you can do it. So I wouldn't beat myself up over that. I try and learn from it. Okay, if I make a better stroke, which I think that was, okay, so I've, got more, I've got more chance of that going in. Um, so second one, I picked it up, lost my arc, hit it off the bottom edge, didn't square the face up. So, you know, I'm a human being. Right. But if I learn from it, then I'm going to have less chance of doing that in the future. And, you know, that's, you've got to be a bit philosophical about this sort of stuff, really. OK, so we're going to end on a philosophical note. Those are our five hardest shots in golf. Do you agree? Have you got other ideas? Use the comments below to let us know what you think. And do subscribe to the Golf Monthly channel if you're new to it and you like what you've seen. Thank you for watching and uh, keep your eyes peeled for more content soon.